This is a 2020 Tiguan 2.0 Turbo SEL Premium R-Line 4Motion, and today we're going to review it. Today we're working with our friends at Mankato Volkswagen in beautiful Mankato, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. And say, Nate, what are we taking a look at today? Today, folks, we're taking a look at this beautiful 2020 Volkswagen Tiguan 2.0 Turbo SEL Premium R-Line 4Motion. And you know, Nate, just real quick, I think we wore the right color today. We're all blue. Yes, <laughs> we just so, happened to do that. That's right. So, say, before we take a look and do a review on this vehicle, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know how to use all the infotainment and technology built into today's modern car, and you like cool collector car stories, take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification so you never miss a video. That's right. So what do you say, Nate? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. All right. The 2020 Tiguan is offered in five trim levels, starting with the Tiguan S, and it starts at $24,495. Then there's the SE, the SE R-Line Black, the SEL, and the SEL Premium R line that starts at $38,795. Now, of course, all are available in either front wheel drive or all wheel drive versions. This particular vehicle is the 2020 Volkswagen Tiguan 2.0 Turbo SEL Premium R line, and it is all wheel drive, which Volkswagen calls its four motion. It is also presented here in blue silk and it has a beautiful black leatherette interior. Now, it is powered by a 2 liter TSI 16 valve double overhead cam inline four cylinder turbocharged engine with intercooler and it has direct fuel injection. It produces 184 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque. It's driven by an eight speed automatic transmission with Tiptronic and it has sport mode. And on the center console, you have the uh, selection where you can do sand and snow and different things like that. Now, out front, it does have the fully automatic aero composite LED low and high beam headlights with daytime running lights, and they are auto level leveling with directionally adaptive auto high beam headlights, and they do have the delay off feature. It also does have fog lights with low speed corner illuminating feature as well. I like the nice chrome grill, the chrome trim around the headlights, and of course this has the R-Line front bumper and badging, and it is a body colored front bumper with a black uh, rub strip fascia accent. It does have parking sensors in the gloss black area there. And up top you do have the black windshield trim. This also has rain detecting variable intermittent wipers. They do have heated wiper jets, and where the windshield wipers sit, that's a heated parking area uh, for the wipers to clear ice off of the wipers. Let's take a look around the side. Okay, I really do like the looks of this vehicle. Uh, here we have the 20-inch two-tone machine dark graphite alloy wheels, and these are wrapped in 255R uh, 40 R20 all season tires. It has a four wheel independent suspension with strut type front and lower control arms, coil springs, telescopic dampers, and stabilizer bar up front. And then out back is multi link sus uh, rear suspension with coil springs, telescopic dampers, and stabilizer bar as well. Now it also has four wheel ABS. There are 13.4 inch vented front and 11.8 inch solid rear brake disc. Okay, along the bottom you see uh, about midway, not rocker panel, but it does have the chrome body side insert and it has the chrome kind of lower cladding or rocker panel molding and the matte black wheel well trim. It also has the body colored power heated side mirrors with power folding and they do have the integ integrated turn signal indicators and this vehicle also has perimeter approach lights you do see it has the body color door handles it has a chrome belt line and side window trim it also then has the deep tinted side privacy glass and up top you have the nice uh, brushed stainless 
uh, roof rails, and it does have a power panoramic moonroof. Let's take a look around the back. Okay, out back, you see it does have the body colored uh, roof spoiler with the high mount brake light, and this is a hands free. Uh, easy open and easy close lift gate and it has a fixed heated rear window and it has the fixed interval wiper as well. There's also a rear view camera. It, ha uh, it features LED brake lights and it has a body colored rear bumper and down below it has the black rub strip fascia and you see it does have the chrome insert as well. Now you can see down in the black gloss maybe that it does have parking sensors and under that it has a quasi dual stainless steel exhaust but it's actually only a single uh, chrome exhaust tip that's that functions let's take a look inside there is a um, there is a cargo area 12 volt power outlet and then underneath the uh, cargo floor is the compact spare tire and I really like that you can also hide and store the cargo shade as well now maximum cargo behind the front row is 73.5 cubic feet maximum cargo behind the second row 37.6 cubic feet and if you get this with a third seat which you can it's 12 cubic feet behind the third row now cargo floor length to the front row length from the front row to the sill is 74 inches length from the second row to the sill is 39 inches and then cargo width at the belt line in the opening here 42 and a half inches Inside between the wheel houses is 39 and a half inches. Cargo opening height from the uh, top of the entrance to here on the floor is 30 inches and the liftover height from the ground to here is 31 inches. So what are some of the safety features on this Tiguan? Well, you have blind spot sensor, cross traffic alert, uh, rear, uh, you have electronic brake force distribution, you have stability control, traction control, hill descent control, hill hold control, front and rear crumple zones, automatic post collision braking system, <laughs> adaptive cruise control and lane keeping system, plus lots more safety and technology. Now, some of the options that are available for this Tiguan, you can get autonomous braking, you can get the uh, power panoramic moonroof, which this one actually has. This one has leatherette, but you can get leather seats. And as I said, you can get a third row. You can also get adaptive cruise control, the surround view camera system, which this one has, navigation system with voice recognition, which this one has, and four wheel, uh, all wheel uh, drive, which is Volkswagen's four motion. And again, this particular version does have that option. So let's talk about the dimensions. Okay, the front track is 62.2 inches, the rear track 61.8 inches, overall width 72.4 inches, length 185.1, height 66.3 inches, wheelbase 109.8 inches, has a minimum ground clearance of 7.9 inches, an approach angle of 26.2 degrees, departure angle 23.3 degrees, breakover angle 19 degrees and there is a curb weight of 3,847 pounds. Now its max payload is 926 pounds and when properly equipped can tow up to 1,500 pounds. It has a turning circle of 37.7 feet and a fuel capacity of 15.9 gallons. On the safety front, it is a 2020 IIHS top safety pick. Now performance, 0 to 60, 8.2 seconds. Standing quarter mile, 16.3 seconds. Top speed, 140 miles an hour. And braking, 60 to 0, 124 feet. Appearance, well, it's chiseled and stylish on the conservative side of design, but it's really simple and uncluttered, and I, I think it's a very good looking SUV. So let's talk about the dependability. Well, basic warranty is four years, 50,000 miles, drivetrain warranty, four years, 50,000 miles. You also have roadside assistance for three years and 36,000 miles. And there's also scheduled maintenance included for two years or 20,000 miles. Economy, 20 in the city, 27 highway, and 23 combined. Not bad for a midsize plus SUV. If you're in the market for a comfortable, safe, reliable, and elegant SUV, 
The interior is great and the ride is very comfortable, plus it's loaded with lots of standard technology. This SUV is conservative, graceful, and the exterior design is, as I said before, nice and it's impressive. Add to that that it's an exceptionally safe and it's uh, boosting an award from the IIHS for the top safety pick plus, and it sure does seem that VW has built themselves a winner. So now let's take a look inside, but before we do, please take a moment to give us a like, leave a comment below, and please click on that subscribe button. So what do you say, Nate? Take it away. And step on the inside. I, I like I like the contrasting colors, you know, the white with the dark. Looks really nice along with the, the stitching right in here. And then the uh, sort of carbon fiber looking uh, dark trim right up here. Now you do have auto up and down all four windows. You have your window lockout. And then um, in, in a VW, the way this works, you know, you got your left and your right mirror control. But then if you turn it all the way back, they fold. And then if you turn it all the way to the right, they heat. I do like this grab handle right here. Right down here you have ample storage and it is actually felt lined, which is really neat. And then you do have some storage down in here in the door. And then this button right here is your uh, trunk release. Now you do have one of your nine uh, speakers from your uh, Fender audio system. And then since this is the R-Line, you do on the inside have the R-Line sill plate and the metal uh, pedals along with your footrest which look really really nice now the seats are Vienna leather Vienna leather covered on the surfaces and uh, they look really nice um, they have a nice dark contrasting stitching which really helps uh, the seat to kind of stand out the driver's seat is a 10-way power including the lumbar and then it also has a three-person memory setting right here now the passenger side is a six-way manual power, but it does include height adjustment. All right, down here, you do have your hood release, and then coming back up in here, you do have a little storage tray that pops out. All right, up here you've got your light control, and uh, you've got, of course, your auto lights on the first click. You've got your parking lights, and then down here you have your lights on physically. And then either in auto or on uh, lights on, you can pull the switch and get your fog lamps. The steering wheel itself is a tilt and telescope, and it is manual, and that lever is located right here. All right, let's step inside. Okay, so this is a push chart. The push chart is located down by the gear selector. All right, so this does have the uh, digital cockpit in here. And so the whole entire screen in this area is digital. Your engine temperature and your fuel gauge are analog. And uh, the, the, but the uh, needle, the, the lines that go up are digital. And uh, this is very customizable. We've done another video on the uh, VW cockpit and the infotainment screen. And if you wanna uh, see all the details of what's in there, click on the link above. Moving on back here to the steering wheel, you do have, of course, on your left, this is your either your flash to pass, your turn signals, uh, also your bright and dim switch. Over here on the far right, you do have all of your windshield wiper controls. And then uh, on the steering wheel itself, this side is uh, cruise control here, safety systems here, and volume for your infotainment screen here. This does have fully adaptive cruise control, including traffic stop and go. Your gap setter is here. Your cruise control on and off is here. Resume, set, and this button simply will show you which safety systems are active. If you actually wanna shut some off, then you've gotta go over here and do that. Uh, again, volume up and down right here for the media. Over here on the right side of the steering wheel, you have your voice command button. You have a view button, which does change your cockpit. There are three different views, so I'll just show you quickly. So there's this view. If you click it, basically it gets rid of everything except for your audio. And then it puts uh, uh, necessary information like your speedometer and gear selector and trips all right down here. If you push it one more time, then you get some more trip information here. 
and then the third time brings you back to the screen that we were at. Pokey, uh, these two buttons right here will go through whatever menu you happen to be in. I happen to be in audio, so that'll scroll through, and then I can press the OK button to select something. Um, and if I want to go left or right to get an, something else other than media, this is what I push. So I've got audio here, I've got navigation, I've got assist systems, I've got driving data, vehicle status, phone, and then uh, back to audio. So that's what these silver buttons do. And over here on the bottom, then these buttons will actually, if you're in uh, audio, oh yeah, and then this button will uh, switch you between uh, like radio stations. I do like the uh, little R logo at the bottom of the steering wheel, you know, being a three spoke, it looks really nice. It is a heated steering wheel and is leather wrapped. Moving over to the infotainment screen, this is an eight inch screen. This uh, is the uh, Fender Premium Audio System and it does have nine speakers, including a subwoofer and it has 480 watts of power. Very nice system. Uh, mostly it's a touch screen. You do have some uh, physical buttons, including a power on and off volume and then a tune uh, button right here. Or you, you can, uh, if you're in, let's say, um, the home screen like this, so you have your power on and off, volume, and then this is a tune button, so it'll change your radio station. Uh, it's all push button. So I've got radio here, I've got media here, I have got phone here, voice, and on voice you can access navigation, radio, telephone, and then media. You can of course uh, click on here and it will tell you what kinds of things you can say. Well, X takes us out of there. All right, over here, you've got a menu button, and that kind of brings up all the apps. There are two screens here, all right? And then, of course, you have a car button, which will bring up lots of cool information. Again, we have another video that explains all this. Click on that link above, and then uh, you can push it multiple times. So if I push car again, I get a little different screen, and if I push car again, I get a little different screen, and then you've got arrows to move around. I've also got an app button here, so I can um, connect my phone. And it, it will, it does have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Mirror Link, Bluetooth, Sirius XM radio. Um, and so it's, it's fully loaded. Now, Mirror Link is an interesting thing. Basically, it's similar to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it's non proprietary. So it's an open source system. And Volkswagen includes that, but it will also, um, if you have a phone that operates off the Symbian um, operating system, Mirror Link will work with that. It will work with, uh, Android Auto, and uh, it will not work with Apple CarPlay currently. All right, moving on down, you do have all physical climate control buttons down here. So you have this is a dual zone auto climate control. So over here you have your temperature indicator. Of course, these are your selectors for your temperature. Right. You've got max defrost here. You've got your uh, rear window defrost here, auto. Uh, climate control on or off there. You do have a menu button and if you push that it shows up in the infotainment screen. Now that is where your heated steering wheel button is. It's also where your heated seats are going to be. One of the things I do like about this is that as I lift my hand up watch what the screen does. So it makes everything larger. So it does sense and I have a feeling that's probably coming off the mirror here but anyways. Uh, so anyways you got your um, Heated steering wheel button right there. All right, over here, of course, you have an off button. You got your fan control right here, and then you have the sync button right here. And moving on down below, you do have a wireless charger down here. It fits uh, a large size uh, cell phone. You have um, your two USBs down here. That'll uh, one of them. This one here, I believe, is the one on the left. Will hook into Android, uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Mirror Link. And then you have a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack if you want to run another kind of audio in, as well as a 12 volt outlet. Okay, moving back here, of course, you have your start stop button. Over here on the right, you've got uh, auto start stop defeat, uh, the mirror button and the parking sensor button. So if I click that, it operates at speeds of a, about uh, anything under about 10 miles an hour. Okay, if I click it, you get this nice 360 view. And it is sideways, like I was talking about on the drive. You can change that orientation, but I just want to point out you get your, um, your your parking sensors showing up here. So when something's walking in front of you, it will show up wherever it is. Okay, so right now it's showing me two things because it's sensing it's close to the curb. 
but it's over the front, so it's not sensing that part. If you click there, then of course you, you get a, a different image. You get the 360 over here. Right now, I've got sort of a top-down view of my uh, front end. If I click here, I get a front camera view that's, that's uh, kind of split. So it, it looks like a V, but this is actually a straight line. And if I click here, then I get just a straight back view uh, with guidelines. Okay? And then I can click this little thing and get rid of it and just have this full screen. Uh, or bring it back, or I can X that out completely. Okay, over on this side, you do have your electronic parking brake. I do like that you have a physical shift knob here. And then, of course, if you bring it all the way down to here and you tap it down once more, it goes from drive to sport. All right, so coming back here, if uh, it's got uh, snow mode, it's got a normal mode, it's got a uh, off-road mode, and then it has a uh, custom off-road. Under normal, I've got eco, normal of course, sport, and then custom. So you can adjust, you know, like the acceleration, you can adjust uh, the steering, that kind of stuff. Okay, moving on back, you do have uh, two cup holders. Let me move the key. Uh, right here, which are very nice. The, the, the problem I see is that this uh, back one here is going to be in the way of your armrest because it's your hand just hangs right there. The front one would be pretty comfortable, but I think this one might be a little difficult, uh, especially for a taller drink. You do have a little storage tray right here. And then if I open up this area, you have a small but fairly deep uh, center armrest storage area. There's no additional USBs or anything else in there. And, and it's just, it's hard plastic. It's not felt line or anything. Moving on up to the glove compartment. You do have your CD player, okay? You also have storage for SD cards. You have an SD card that runs your navigation, but you also have an open SD card if you can't see you have movies or, or um, music that you want to put in there. And then, of course, you have a fairly deep glove, uh, glove part storage area, and then um, you do have another little area. It's kind of interesting. It's like a coin storage right in here. Okay, moving on up to the uh, mirror here, you've got your three home link buttons. This is an auto dimming rear view mirror with a compass built in. Coming on back up here, of course, you do have your reading light controls. I like it that they're all LED in here. You got your rear lights here. You can have them turn on or off depending on what you want when the doors are open. And then this right here is your power shade control for your panoramic sunroof. And this, of course, will slide the window back and or tilt. And then up here, you've got your safety systems and information systems buttons right here. The visors themselves are backlit i really like this this light um and uh, you know leave a comment down below are you a fan of having them up here or when they're built into the actual visor i'm not sure they are of course telescoping and they are on both sides all right well, let's step into the back all right stepping into the second row of course you got the same look on the door um, you've got a nice uh, bottle storage area you can also just use it for storage um, there isn't actually a groove in for a bottle but it's slanted forward that it would work and kind of lean up here um, you got your auto up and down window you have got uh, two of your nine speakers back here for your fender system and then um, now the seats themselves You'll notice on the edge of the seat by the door, there's a little plastic storage area that they built in, which I think is kind of handy. And the seats themselves, if you pull on this little uh, tether that's here, pull it up and the seats will fold. Now, they kind of look like they're sitting up a ways, but if you push, they'll actually lock down and stay there. Pull the same tether to pull it up and put it back. Okay, it does have a center armrest right here. I like that, dual cup holders, and enough area to rest your arms on the side. It also has uh, rear uh, map pockets right here on both sides. You got your air vent controls right here, as well as a USB and another 12 volt outlet right here. Okay, so on the inside, I left the driver's seat where it was. Uh, you know, <laughs> I've got like 10 inches. It's just massive back here. Um, the seats themselves are comfortable. You know, they come up a little bit. Like I said, they're firmer than the front seats. Uh, but I think, like Rob said, on a long ride, 
that would be really nice. Now, so these seats do recline and actually they move forward and backwards too. So to recline, you grab the tether, the same one that I pulled when I folded the seat all the way down. So if I pull mine, I can pull the seat all the way back to here. Now, also underneath the seat on both sides, there is a pull bar. If I pull that, I can actually slide this seat, you know, quite a ways forward. Headroom here, I've got uh, close to two inches. So a lot of room for an interior of a car. Um, just, I mean, it feels big back here. All right, so overall, I really like this car. Uh, so, I gotta say the steering is really boosted. I I, I like that for around town driving. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll see if it stiffens up a little bit here on the on the highway. But um, overall, you know, it's I, I like the seats are comfortable. Um, I I do have um, it's, uh, I think about a ten way power driver's seat, yeah. but the passenger seat is like six way manual. Which is a little surprising on a top trim, right? Um, but you know, nonetheless, the seats are comfortable, um, easy to get in and out. Well, it's, again, it's a raised SUV. You've got so you got a little higher height where you're, you know, sitting down, so you know, as far to go to sit. Right. Um, getting in the front's easy. Uh, we'll overlay a video, and you'll see me get in the back, and we'll let that speak for itself. Because I actually haven't been in the back seat yet. Interior uh, ergonomics. Well, everything is nicely laid out. Um, you've got plenty of steering wheel controls to do most things, and then you do have your infotainment screen right here handy. I do like it that it has a physical shift lever. Easy to park and move around town, very easy. Like I said, that steering is boosted, so it's a one finger turn. You've got the 360 bird's eye view that you can click yeah. on at any time. Yeah. you got front and rear sensors. Um, very, very easy to park and would be easy to, to drive around town. All right. I am going to pull over here and we're going to let Rob drive uh, so and see what he thinks. Okay, my turn to drive. We'll see on acceleration. Okay, start. Okay. Wow. A uh, little bit of a turbo lag there, huh? Yeah. And I was rolling. I wasn't from a dead standstill. So, yeah, a couple seconds after you mash the gas, you're moving, but that turbo kicks in. So it's quite a bit of turbo lag there. Wow. It's a lower Surprise. speed, too. Yeah, it, it I means just traffic speeds. If you needed to uh, do an emergency, you know, quick takeoff, uh, you better plan for that. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure you're going to get used to it if you drove the car, yeah. but I tell you what, it's definitely noticeable. But you know, one of the things that is not noticeable is noise. Uh, yeah, outside noise. This is this is really quiet in here. I'm surprised. Wow. You know, and um, this car is loaded, loaded with safety features. Um, you know, blind spot, uh, adaptive cruise. You got you know your bird's eye camera, uh, hill descent, hill control. Um, rear cross traffic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rear cross traffic. So many things, and I'll list those in my exterior review. Fit and finish. Um, you know, it's a German car. If you've ever driven a Volkswagen, it has that Volkswagen look and feel. And as soon as I sat in it, it's like, yep, it smells like a German car. And that's not a bad thing. That's a familiar thing because I've had Volkswagens in the past, and I actually I, I love them. But, you know, I mean, even the top of the dash pad is soft and pliable. Uh, you've got some hard plastics in areas, but most places where your hand or arms rest, very nice, very comfortable, very soft. Okay, so my favorite thing is this camera button down here, which gives you the ability under the speed of about 10 miles an hour to automatically turn on the 360 camera. That's my favorite thing. Okay, and my favorite thing, I absolutely love these wheels. I love the way they look. Those are my favorite things.